back. So here we go, uh, 2 Timothy 1. Thank you, Father in heaven. Lord, please give me the utterance to bring forth your word in a manner that will be pleasing to you and that will be edifying for all of us, Lord. May you give us the godly wisdom and understanding to take something and may it be placed in our hearts and stay there from yes. your word today. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Jesus Christ, right here, by the will of God. So it wasn't like, you know, all, everything's by the will of God, obviously, but no one, it was Jesus himself who made, who made uh, after he was risen, who made Paul an apostle. It wasn't any, anyone who, who, uh, who walked with Jesus and then later on made others or whatever. He was a true apostle of Jesus. He's not one of the original 12, but it was by Jesus' uh, own mouth that he, was, he became an apostle. He, he used them mightily. I mean, really mightily, right? Uh, verse 2, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son. Now, he's not his real son. He's his son in Christ, right? He, he's like an adopt, almost like an adopted son. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord. What's he doing here? He's loosing. He doesn't have to say, I loose. You don't have to say it. You just say grace, mercy, and peace upon you. Grace, mercy, and peace to you. You know, to Timothy, he said it right there. To Timothy, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. So he's loosing grace, mercy, and peace to Timothy. Thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers day and night. Without ceasing, I have remembrance of my prayer in my, of thee in my prayers day and night. He 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 ha includes him. He's got his list, I'm sure, like we all do. We have our list. He's he. He includes Timothy in his prayers day and night without ceasing, always remembering, always bringing, remembering to bring him forth in prayer. I think that's like just totally awesome every day to pray for somebody. Isn't it that awesome? I yes. mean, yeah, you know, we should all have our list. I mean, mine just gets bigger. And you want to know the awesome, awesome, awesome thing is that God, when I say, Lord, did I forget anybody? He brings them to mind right away. He just brings them up. It's it just it's it's uncanny. It, it it just boggles my mind every time I do it. Lord, who did I forget? Did I forget anybody? And if there was somebody in my ever expanding list that I forgot, He will bring them right there. So God is awesome. He answers prayers like you know, and and we don't realize it. You know, we oh well, you know, I just remembered. No, no, you ask God to do something, and and, and He does it right away. You take that. You take that gift of faith. Because it is a gift of faith every time he answers our prayer. Huh? Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. He wants, he wants to see him so he can be filled with joy, but always he's remembering that Timothy, you know, how he must be sad because here's Paul, you know, and he's a, he's a, he's a captive now, so they haven't seen each other. And he says he's being mindful of his tears. So he's, he's remembering, you know, he's always remembering Timothy's sorrow and, and praying for him, right? Like in the verse before. Verse five, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee. Unfeigned means, you know, I mean, you just find what the word means, exactly. Unfeigned is, the word is, oh boy. <laughs> okay. Anupokritos. Anupokritos, that's it. Anupokritos. And it means without hypocrisy, not fake, real, you know, his real faith, not fake. So he says, I bring to remembrance, when I call to remembrance, he's remembering how, how real his faith is in him, which was in his grandmother, and we're going to read, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois, and, ma, and thy mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded in thee also. So all through the family, they've all had unwavering real honest faith from the heart <clears throat> uh, verse five i said verse six wherefore i put in the actually hang on a second before i get into verse six let's go to thomas nelson because it has a comment 
on verse one to five. So here's what it says. An apostle, one sent with a commission of Jesus Christ, literally from Jesus Christ. Paul was not one of Jesus' early disciples. He received his apostleship by direct appointment of the risen Christ. So that's the comment for that one to five. <clears throat> Verse six, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So he's saying he wants to stir up. He doesn't want him to be afraid. He wants to stir up that gift of faith, that, that dunamis, that power. Uh, he, wants, he wants that to come forth in Timothy, right? He's, he's saying, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear. So these are all spirits, you see, but of power. Spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of power. He's given us the spirit of love. And he's out of a sound mind. Well, a spirit of sound mind, what, is, what, what does that mean? A self-control, it's what it is. The word is uh, sophromenos. Sophrom in a, in a ismos. <laughs> sophrom ismos. You know, like these words, <laughs> they're not easy to pronounce. But anyway, what it means is self-discipline, prudence, self-control. Amen. Yeah, that's what our sound mind is. Not only not being nuts or whatever, sound mind being, being reasoning or whatever, but self-control, discipline, discipline. Verse eight, be thou not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. So he says, that, don't be afraid. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Don't be afraid to go out and testify for Jesus. It's, you know what? The more you do it, I was so afraid in the beginning. I was so afraid to, to go and pray for people. And I met this fellow, <clears throat> this fellow here, he was actually, he, he had signed up with Torben, which is put there, um, uh, the last reformation. Now, bad doctrine there, but they do have something interesting that they do. It's called kickstarting. Now they bring people who've never prayed for other people and, and people who pray for people and they put them together and they go out into public. And, and I went with this guy, we went to a shopping center and you got to realize where I was coming from. Here I was, you know, like, you know, uh, a, a, at one point, uh, somewhat of a rock star and, and, you know, people used to cheer and this and that. And then for me to, to humble myself and go and walk up to people who looked infirmed or had, you know, something problems or whatever, and offer to pray for them. It, it took a, le a big leap of faith because I'll tell you what, uh, it's, 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 it's hard to deal with rejection and it's hard to deal with the demons until you realize it's a, a lot of, you're going to get received by a lot of demons. That's for sure. A lot of people are just going to turn around, get out of here, and then tell you, F-bomb you, and, you know, and then the other ones going, looking at you, looking at you like with disgust and, or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever um, reception you're going to get, sometimes it's not the one you expect. And, but you know what? God is faithful. If, if you continue to step out in faith, he will reward your faith. So, you know, it's, it's very difficult not to, to go out in front of people and, you know, never be ashamed. Never be ashamed of the gospel. No. How can you be shamed of such good news? How can you be ashamed of something that's going to give somebody eternal life? Uh -huh. how, how could you be ashamed of that? So, therefore, don't be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. The more you do it, the more you get out in front of somebody, and you see a smile on somebody's face. You know, if they give you a smile, when they're people you're dealing with, cashiers, Charlie heard me the other day, right? The cashier at a hardware store. You know, somebody smiles at you and, and you know, you say, yeah, you're so, yeah it's, it's, isn't it good to smile sometimes? And I said, and then you said, and then you go right to, right? You go right for the jugular right there. You go, can I ask you a question? A personal question? And they're gonna say, they're gonna say yes. They're gonna say yes. And then you say, do you believe in God? And then you take it from there. Well, I believe in something, you know, well, that's a good thing. That's a good answer because you believe in something, a greater power than us. God will show them to yourself. And then you do a little prayer right there. You don't have to, you don't have to beat them over the head and say, you know, uh, uh, you know, because the bottom line is, you know, they have to want it in their heart. So you have to say, you know, you show them your faith and show them father in heaven in Jesus name. I ask that you show this person what they need to be shown. 
They don't know what to believe in, Lord. They're seeking, they're looking, but they don't know, Father in heaven. So show them the truth. May you take the blinders off their spiritual eyes. Yes, Lord. And show them the truth. This is the kind of thing you have to go and do in front of people because, because what better thing could there be that you could do for anybody than to give them the good news? You know? And we're no way coming up in the verse. I haven't finished the verse yet. Coming up in the verse, we're going to be a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. So here it goes back to back to the beginning of verse eight. Be thou not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. Afflictions of the gospel. If you're going to spread the news, you know you're going to be afflicted. You know you're going to have travail. You know you're, it's, you know, Basically, what is that? That's tribulation. If you look up that word affliction, it's, you know, tribulation, that word, I forget uh, the, the, um, uh, the Greek word, and I'm not going to go looking for it now, but uh, it's, they basically mean the same thing. Afflictions, tribulations, that's what it is. So be thou a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Who? hath saved us and called us with an holy calling. God gave us a holy calling. He saved us. And what does he say? Now go forth, spread the good news. Amen. Go out there, tell people, tell people about the good news. You know, you're saved. You have now that gift. You're sealed in the spirit. You know, you know, when, when you're saved, you know, you're saved. Amen. You know you're saved. It's that simple. It's that simple. If you're doubting your salvation, yeah, I'm doubting if you're saved. Amen. <laughs> you know, I, I, when when you when you go into God's word and you and you look at and what it says, all these all these badly connected and 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 out of context verses that people use to say well you can you, you see you can lose your salvation you can walk away you can give it up you can't if god says here read john 10 read john 10 what does jesus says uh you know i'll never leave you or forsake you god and the father uh, father will never leave you or forsake you you know are you stronger than god are you stronger than god can you, if god's got you by the hand can you take your hand away from god no God will never let you go. God will never let you go. Once you are saved, you are saved. Yeah, we might backslide. Everybody backslides, some more than others. But you know what? Once you're saved, you're saved. So what does it say? Once again, who hath saved us? It doesn't say maybe. There's no uh, unless. It's who hath saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His grace <laughs> his own purpose and his grace grace you are saved by grace not of works lest any man should boast anybody who thinks they have to do anything other than believe to be saved well jesus might have something that he's going to say to you and uh, it might be that what he said in in the john three sixteen and matthew he might say you know for you who think you you're working for your salvation that you have to be it's jesus who makes us holy we're we're <laughs> we're we're right away we have we give the enemy ground just by being corruptible we, we're you know our bodies being you know in, a, in our in our earthly bodies is ground for the enemy and so you know not according to our works but according to our own purpose and grace which was given us in jesus christ there it is in jesus christ and before. before the world began and so you know yeah you're like god you can't you can't put god in a box god does not have that constraint you heard me say it many times god does not have that constraint yes time and space before the world began before in the beginning the first 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 verse in in the bible genesis in the beginning <laughs> the beginning of what the beginning of time when god created time you know uh, you know, in the beginning. So God creates time. You know, the earth was, uh, God, God created the earth and, 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 you know, it was null and it was a void of, of form and all that. And so he, he does all his works 
And in the, in, in the first verse, it basically, first of all, God, it says God. So it's not just the father, it's the father and the son. And, the, and it says, and, there's, and, the, and the spirit of God was over all the earth. So there it is right away in the first verse. In the first verse, you have, even if you don't, can, even if you don't say, well, it doesn't say the father or the son, it says God. And uh, I want to say that it's maybe, maybe it's, uh, you know, somebody who's surmising. I want to say that maybe it's not uh, Jesus being mentioned there, but he, it is. But, but maybe if somebody says, refuses to admit it, you say, well, there's two thirds right there. It says God and his spirit, his spirit covered the earth. So there's two thirds of the uh, mention, if you want to take it that way. I take it as the, all the, the Trinity being mentioned in the first verse, because it says it's going to say, you know, uh, God's like us. How many times does it say in the first book of Genesis? Uh, talk talk about like you know ours like us it's always it's always in the plural you know Adonai lords so anyway I'm getting I'm getting sidetracked here and so just before the world began so you know there's don't try and figure it out with your head because it's so far beyond our understanding okay his plan I heard somebody say uh, and this guy's supposed to be a Christian and whatever and he's going on you know Satan's plan to to upset God's plan to work no 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 it's not Satan's plan it's it's <laughs> it's God's plan it's God's plan that Satan, Satan is there because God what God God lets him be there and God lets him be there to to purify us you know what they do when they when they when they set uh, precious metals through a fire, they assay it. You know, they, 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 they burn off the uh, what is it? The, the tra the what's the word? Uh, the, the impurities. They Trump. Somebody's somebody's making noise there. Uh, he he gave you the word. Oh, what is it? Froth. Yes. Is it, is it froth? Dross. Dross. That's it. Dross. D r o s s. Yeah, dross. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's what we do. That's why Satan's there to, to put us through the fiery uh, trials and, the, and to uh, purify us by fire. And, you know, I, I can't believe that somebody said, yeah, Satan's plan, but Satan's plan, it's God's plan. You know, God, God had this plan from before, from before the, the beginning of time, you know? And now verse 10, verse 10. But it is now, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath, who hath, and remember, hath means has, it means it's done, who has abolished death, and who hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. That's the good news. And the good news is he came and did it all. And all you have to do is believe and you will be saved. He who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 11, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles for which cause I also suffer these things. Well, of course, <laughs> I mean, Paul probably suffered a lot more than many have suffered, you know, but he was used mightily by God, you know, and of course, you know, uh, the, you know, the harder you're going to work at, um, uh, and it's work, I say work, it's, it's, it's a work of joy, it's a work of love, uh, at, at spreading the news of Jesus Christ, the harder the devil's going to come at you. And God allows it because, you know, because you got to earn your rewards, right? <laughs> for, for which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless. I am not ashamed. He keeps at it. You know, the, the, you cannot be ashamed. You, there's, n, there's never anything that should hinder you from, from bringing God into the picture, from bringing God into the conversation, from preaching Jesus. There should be never anything that should hinder you. And if you find you're being hindered, well, you bind those spirits. I bind all spirits that would hinder me from, from bringing forth the good news, from spreading the good word, the word of God, the word of Jesus Christ, may they all be bound, you know, and, and, and before you go in and start talking, well, you know, you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound on heaven, whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. And I loosen to myself, the spirit 
of zeal. The yes. utterance, the utterance that I need to, you, you can do it. That's all. And watch what happens. And then, then you take that step of faith and then it's going to get easier and easier and easier. It'll become natural and you'll get shot down. But when you do, remember, it's demons shooting you down. It's unbelief or whatever. And you give it to God You say, and if somebody says, if somebody says, like I said earlier, yeah, well, I believe in something. High. I don't know who God is. I don't, I don't, I don't know what God is. I don't, I don't know, but I do believe in some, a higher power. Well, then you, as you turn away, you just pray in stealth. In that secret place, you just say, Lord, please show him. Open his eyes. Open his eyes. And he says he, believe, he believes in something. He just doesn't know what to believe in. Show him, Lord, that you're there. Show him, Father in heaven. Open his eyes. I ask that as you, like you did with me. Like you did with me. I say it all the time. He says, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. There you go. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Verse 13, and the subtitle I got here is Hold to Sound Teaching. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Jesus Christ, in faith and love. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. That good thing which was committed unto thee, the good news, the power of God, the Holy Spirit sealed until the day of redemption. How much better can it get? Amen. You know, just knowing that, knowing that should make you want to go and just, you know, please the Lord. And the joy that you'll, like it says, like Jesus says, these words I've spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you and your joy might be full. When you spread the good word, the good news, and, and somebody, and you see that seed planted, and even if they don't say the sinner's prayer, or they, ah, yes, I, I, I invite you, even just that questioning, that, that, you know, that look in the eye, like, yeah, and, and you'll see it, you'll know it when you see it, you'll know it, and, and you know, and you just tell them, listen, you want to know who God is? You guys just ask him. Just ask him. Say, say, God. And you don't have to say, you don't have to say, you know, uh, Jesus. You just say God, because God covers it. God covers it all. You just say, God, I want to know you. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my life. I want to know you. And, and, and you know what? Many people at one point or another will remember that and will do it absolutely you want to know god you tell him just invite him in just tell him you want to know him that's it invite him in invite him. you know verse 15 this thou knowest that all they which are in asia be turned away from me so that asia was asia minor it's part of uh my cat's meowing to come in. It's part of uh, it was part of the Roman Empire at that time. Anyway, uh, this thou knowest that that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom of whom are Figilus and Herm Hermogenes. Hermogenes. Uh, now, these two uh, names are. Hang on a second, and it says the next verse sixteen. The Lord give mercy unto the house of. Onesiphorus, <laughs> On, and it's the only place he's mentioned in all of the Bible. He must, and supposedly he's from that area, you know, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. So he's not ashamed of him being a captive or whatever. Yeah, uh, Figilus, Fugilus, Fugilus is the name, a Christian of the Roman province, yeah, who deserted Paul. So it's someone who deserted Paul, is Figilus. And the other one, uh, Hermogenes, is uh, just a man of Rome. And then once again, um, uh, Onesphorius is uh, a Christian of the province of Asia. And it's, it says apparently that, uh, you know, he must have had a, uh, shown, like, it's like, like Paul says here, he often refreshed me, he took care of him, helped him out and whatever, and was not ashamed of his chain meaning meaning his bonds, you know. So uh, verse 17, but when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him 
So he's asking, he's in intercessory prayer here. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy in the Lord in that day. In that day and in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. So, you know, in that he might find mercy in that day. Well, I'm not sure what that day is, but I would surmise that that would be the day of the Lord, you know, and um, that he would show him mercy and show him, Paul's trying to come in again, and show him that, you know, uh, give him the rewards, his due, his due, his due reward uh, when he, when he, when he's in front of the Lord. And so that's it. That's Second Timothy 1. I got a little sideways, but you know what? Like I said, and I say this again to everybody who's listening on the recording or whatever, there's nothing you can do better than, than help somebody else recognize who God is and bring him up and lift him up, you know, and, 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 and speak of him in conversation. Because you know what? Many, many people get sidetracked with all the distractions of this world. It's good to bring God into the, just into the picture and just even to mention, God bless you. Like, God. We, like we've talked about, before. God bless you. Watch how, how much money, how many blessings you're going to get back. That's number one. And then even if the people that don't like, you know, that you catch by surprise and are not sure of who God is or, or how, what they believe, they're going to think that. And just the fact that you mentioned God, they'll think about God, whatever they don't know yet. So, you know, the more you, the more you lift them up, the more there will be in that multitude that no man can number as talked about in Revelation 7. Praise you all. God bless you all. And that's 2 Timothy 1. Amen.